Welcome to the Happiness Minute. Our episode today is called Understanding Differences, Why HRT Isn't Suitable for Everyone. Today, we will explore the complexities of HRT, discussing why it might not be the right choice for everyone, and highlighting effective alternatives for managing menopausal symptoms. Our guest today is Hannah Charman. Hannah is an experienced medical herbalist. She now focuses on supporting cancer survivors who prefer a natural route through menopause. She combines herbal medicine with personalized health coaching and hypnotherapy to create customized treatment programs tailored to each individual's needs. Welcome back to the Happiness Minute. I'm here with our special guest today, Hannah. Hi, Hannah. How are you? Hi, Anna. I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm okay. <laughs> Very <Yes>. sunny here. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you. So, so, Hannah, before anything else, can you tell us what you do? So, I'm a natural menopause specialist. My background is in herbal medicine, and I've worked as a medical herbalist for 25 years, and I also offer health coaching and advanced hypnotherapy for particularly for women who can't take HRT. So cancer survivors would be a good example. Um, but anyone who just doesn't feel that HRT is the right route for them, basically. I see, I see. So I guess like the topic today is very topical and a lot of like women are looking for alternatives anyway mm-hmm. uh, it, when, it, when, it, when it comes to their menopause. So before anything else, what is HRT and how does it work? So... The idea is that when we reach menopause, our most potent form of estrogen drops Mm -hmm. and we can get certain symptoms off the back of that. So most of us have heard of the hot flushes Mm -hmm. and fatigue and mood swings, but there's a whole load of other symptoms you can get as well. And they can make life really difficult for some women. So about 20 percent of women have really debilitating symptoms. About 20 percent don't notice menopause at all. Mm -hmm. And the rest of us sit somewhere in the middle. So the idea is with HRT is that you're basically replacing those hormones that are uh, dropping during that time and getting rid of your symptoms. Um, There is a a kind of school of thought, which is that, you know, if your body is naturally trying to reduce those hormones, Mm -hmm. is it really a good idea to keep topping them up and force feeding a body? Uh, with those hormones that it doesn't really want anymore so that's a whole other topic that I could talk about for quite a long time (laughs) but that's the the basic gist of it yes yeah so I think you know hearing what you're saying is that HRT is not a one-size-fits-all solution for menopausal symptoms am I correct in saying that Yeah, I mean, you do hear some women who say it's absolutely life changing and it's brilliant and they wouldn't be without it. And then some other women find that it makes their symptoms worse. Mm -hmm. Um, The thing is with women and their hormones is that we are very, very finely tuned. You know, our hormones ebb and flow during the course of the month. And if you look at the physiology and all the feedback mechanisms that your body uses to um, manage those levels of hormones, they're very, very intricate. So simply sort of adding in a single dose of two or three even hormones constantly uh your body isn't always going to appreciate that so it's it's very difficult to kind of get the dosages right for hrt and adjust them during the course of the month because we are still even if you're not having periods anymore you are still having some form of cycle going on in the background yeah. and we can't adjust the dosages of the hrt very accurately in response to those yeah, it's very hard, I would say, because like, every individual is different. You know, Absolutely. Different. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned something about cancer a while ago. So what other pre-existing health conditions can make it unsuitable for, you know, some of the women? Because I know, like, definitely cancer, because you, de- you can't really tap it up when, you know, your cancer is related to hormones. Yeah, so uh, there are certain forms of cancer which uh, feed on estrogen. Yeah. And those are, you know, things like most breast cancers, cervical, uh, ovarian, uterine, those sorts of things. There are a few others as well. 
but also for example if someone has had a history of stroke in their past so I've treated women who've had strokes in their 30s and 40s and did not want to go on to HRT even though the doctors will now say actually our newer forms of HRT are much safer than the old ones and you're okay to have it if you've had a stroke in the past um they're still nervous of taking HRT, understandably. So, um, yeah, those are the sorts of ladies that I typically work with. Um, so do you think, like, you mentioned stroke and things like that. Do you think there are other factors, like genetic factors, that affect women um, when they take HRT? Yes. Uh, I mean, in Russia, they use other methods to assess women um, before they put them on to HRT to see if it's safe and suitable for them to have. Mm -hmm. Over here, we're not quite that sophisticated. So, um, yeah, it's a very individual thing. And a lot comes down to personal preference as well, doesn't it? So, you know, yeah, some people just true. don't don't want to go near mainstream medication unless they really need to. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, genetics comes into it. But I think a large part of the reason why we have such trouble with menopause these days is basically our lifestyle. You know, because if you look at other cultures where they have a generally healthier lifestyle and a healthier yeah. diet and a healthier attitude towards menopause and aging, they don't have such a problem with menopause. Yeah, they don't um, have that much of an issue, I would say. So you mentioned lifestyle so choices. So is that, will that mean like diet and things like that? Or like, you know, smoking, for yeah. example, drinking a lot of alcohol? Uh, all of the above so it's it's not that we're blaming we're not blaming people we're not blaming yeah. women for yeah, having course, a course. menopause at all because unfortunately this is the life we live these days and I live it as much as everyone else does where mm -hmm. you know by the time you get to menopause you've usually put everyone and everything else first for decades mm -hmm. you put yeah. the career or the kids or the husband or the partner or whoever it is comes before you and you deal with them and look after them before yourself and then when you reach menopause your body goes do you know what I can't I can't do this I haven't got the resources I need to make this big change um and you know we are usually chronically sleep deprived overstressed under exercised um undernourished and it's no wonder when we have this big change to make that the body goes, I, I, I'm just, I'm all out. I've got nothing to do this so week. It's, it's a, a, a bit of a shock, I think, to the system yeah, when it happens. Yeah. Because it's a big change, you know, it's like, it's yeah. like adolescence again. Your yes. body changes, <laughs> your physiology changes. It's not called the change for nothing. Everything changes. Mm -hmm. And it's quite a burden on your body, which is fine if it's got the resources to do that. Um, but usually it doesn't mm. because we've we've not really we've kind of neglected our own needs for a long time and that's mm. that's when it comes back to bite us so um are there other because i know like there's like you know with hrt and also with menopause are there alternative treat treatments that are available to help because like some if, you know if you're in that category where you can't really have hrt are there other alternative treatments that are available so, yes, in terms of the mainstream alternatives, there are other drugs coming out now which will treat hot flushes, ah. but are not HRT. Yeah, no, drugs again. <laughs> yeah, antidepressants are also quite commonly prescribed in menopause, which is quite a controversial thing because it's not depression and it doesn't work. They don't work yeah, for menopause or depression, but they can occasionally work for some other symptoms. In terms of other things you can do, which are nothing to do with mainstream medicine, yes, there's tons you can do. Okay. Um, I always say to start with really upping the self-care and I'm not talking about like little things. Sometimes you really do need to make a concerted effort and perhaps, you know, join an exercise class, which might take you out of your comfort zone, might need a bit of rejigging with the rest of your diary um, to really change your diet quite drastically and I'm not saying all in one go but you know little <laughs> steps at a time so that in six months time your diet doesn't look anything like it does today um making sure you're getting to bed nice and early and getting a good night's sleep so you know these are all things that require quite a bit of effort and quite a bit of self-discipline but they do make a big difference not just in menopause but for the years after that as well so for example there's about 14 research studies that show that if we 
get 30 minutes exercise a day, we cut out risk of dementia by something like 30 to 45%, That's which is huge. Lot. That's yeah. huge. 30, mi 30 minutes a day. Yeah, yeah. Too long. 30 minutes a day. And then you're not only helping your brain health, bone health, reducing your cancer risk, doing all these other really clever things, you're actually reducing your dementia risk into old age as well. So, you know, there's not a drug on the market at the moment that will do that. So I say always start with self-care. It costs little or nothing, nothing. depending on what, what you're choosing to do. Um, and see how you go with that. And if that's not working on its own, then it would be time to look at things like prescribed herbal medicines, um, prescribed nutritional supplements. But I say prescribed because it's so easy just to go to the local shop, pick something off a shelf and it's all guesswork and yeah, you also, don't want that. No, the quality that you get on the high street and even online is not always great. Whereas if you come and see a practitioner, then I will be able to assess you and know exactly what it is we need to do and give you really good quality, high potency medicines to, to get you back on track again. And it does work. It works really fast. So, yeah. yeah it's so, worth the, the, so in terms of, I'm going to have, have a look at it in two ways now. So when you, when you say self-care, so that means regular exercise, diet and nutrition. So are there particular food that is actually quite good for um, for this? So the general recommendation is what we would call a Mediterranean diet, which my eyes lit up when I first heard that years ago. <laughs> you. That's pizza and pasta <laughs> and all the things I love. But no, it's not pizza and pasta. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, I don't <really> know. <laughs> yeah, it's just a really good balanced diet. So there's some lean meat, fish, there's yeah. fish, there's um, beans and pulses. So things like lentils and stuff like that's really important. Um, and a lot of those contain phytoestrogens as well, which help to balance out your estrogen levels in the background. Lots of nuts and seeds and fresh fruit and vegetables. And yeah, it's just herbs, spices, just all the nutrients you need in the right in the right balance. Um, and that seems to work really well. Phytoestrogens are really quite key when it so comes. These are, to um, the estrogen that comes from uh, vegetables and plant yeah they're really hard to explain because we used to say oh it's just like plant estrogen so it's like your own estrogen but it's not yeah. it's it's like a weaker form of estrogen that has it it's enough to kind of balance things out but it's not as potent as your homemade estrogen or anything you would take in hrt so Basically, what phytoestrogens do is they have a normalizing effect on your own estrogen levels. So if you've got too much, they'll sit on the estrogen receptors of the cells and stop the real estrogen getting through. And if you don't have enough, it will make your body feel like it's got more estrogen than it actually has. So it's kind of hard to explain. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it's but good, good for you. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day. Normalized yeah. estrogen levels. <laughs> Um, you also mentioned uh, in terms of self-care, regular exercise. Are there particular exercises that, you know, like they can start off with and then maybe progress later on? Yeah. So, again, this is a, a thing we need to change up a bit in perimenopause. So if you've always been uh, doing aerobic exercise, running, um, treadmill stuff, you know, um, spinning, those sorts of really high energy things, um, that can actually be quite tricky for your body to deal with as you move into menopause. Your, your hormones mean that that's a lot of stress to put on your body and then you can put on weight and it, it can sort of have yeah. a bit. So it's actually like, yeah. It's really yeah. A so it's effect. better if you're noticing that your exercise isn't quite working for you anymore, better to try gentler forms of exercise. So walks, yoga, tai chi, those kinds of things, the nice energizing, rejuvenating exercises but weight bearing where you're bearing your own weight really good because you need that strength in your bones and your tendons and your muscles but also a little bit of weight training is also brilliant not just for bone strength but weights will burn fat for a long time after you finish your session as well where you don't get that same effect with other forms of exercise but i think the key really is to enjoy it um because you're not going to stick at anything if you don't enjoy it. I love swimming. I go swimming like three or four times a week. I've never done so much exercise in my life as I have now. And I still don't <laughs> feel like I do a great deal. 
<laughs> Student is a, but, it's a, you know, it's a like a sport and an exercise. Well, exactly. <laughs> you know, I a few years ago, I was piling on the weight. My knees were so bad I could barely get up and down the stairs. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I was eating quite well. My hormones were in pretty good shape. The only thing missing was the exercise. Did I get up and exercise? Nope. <laughs> I just still, even though I felt awful and looked awful, and I'm like, kind of, you're running a menopause business, so you know, you need to kind of yeah, you need to do get up here yeah, and do something. And I ended up having a hypnotherapy swap with a friend, and she helped me with motivation to exercise. And from the first session, I was like in the in the pool at six thirty every morning. Oh, I know. And you know the difference it made within a, just a couple of weeks. My all my aches and pains went. The weight started to come off. It just made a world of difference. It really is medicine. And if you're not motivated to do it by yourself, maybe get together with get, get the, friend get the or, the the class or something so that you will sort of feel like yeah. you're letting down if you don't go. Uh, you, you mentioned, um, so finish with self-care, you mentioned prescribed. Um, can you tell me more about that? So it's like herbal medicine as well that people... Yeah, so people with, yeah. most people have never heard of medical herbalists, which is a real shame because we've got a lot to offer not just in terms of menopause, but all manner of different health issues. But basically, medical herbalists in their true sense mm -hmm. are trained for between three and five years. So about degree oh, level. Quite long. Yeah. Um, and a lot of our training crosses over with mainstream medical training. So we do anatomy, physiology, clinical skills, diagnostic skills. So we can do diagnosis, we can do examinations, we can interpret blood tests. Um, and we also learn how to make our own herbal medicines, which comes in very handy okay. quite a lot of the time. It's brilliant because if, you know, for example, with things like pessaries, if I can't get hold of the ones I want or the ones that I can get hold of aren't quite right for my patient, I can just make my own. Uh, and it's it's nice. You really do get individualized treatment doing it that way. But of, of course, instead of treating people with mainstream medications, we are using medicinal herbs to work in the background and get um, get to the grassroots of what's going on effectively. And the herbs are very gentle. I call them intelligent medicines because they just go in the body and they know where to go and what to do and they just get on with the job. Um, but they sort of tweak and nudge and push your body back towards wellness because your body knows how to be well. It's just lost its way a little bit so that the herbs kind of show them the way again. So it works really well. And it's very versatile. So, you know, if you come to me with 20 different menopause symptoms, then I can say, well, where do you want to start? What's top priority for you? And we go with that and uh, and work from there. And as time goes by, we change your herbal prescription until you don't need your herbs anymore. So I, I would presume like every individual has a different set of, um, you know, medication then. Um, yes. So it depends no, on no what they're feeling the um, as well. So there's no particular herb oh yeah this is the herb that we're going to get for everyone you know there's nothing like that because everything's individual I do have my favorite herbs that end up in most people's prescriptions but there's uh, no two herbal prescriptions are the same you know everyone has completely different yeah because everyone has different physiology and everyone yeah. would have different like I said symptoms um, absolutely as well so um so I, I think my next question is um are there other, besides the herb, are there other non-hormonal medications that are available out there? Because you mentioned it a while ago that there something is coming up. Are they non-hormonal? Because sometimes with the hormonal medication, you're not with that really, you know. Yeah, so in, in terms of mainstream, there are new medications coming out for things like hot flushes. Oh, yes, okay. Um, which are non-hormonal and also the antidepressants, which are commonly used in treating menopause symptoms are also non-hormonal. It's, it's a bit of a shame really, because you know half the population of the world is women and there's not a great deal of, doesn't appear to be a yeah. great deal of new stuff coming out onto the market to help us with our various things, our various challenges that we have to deal with in midlife. But you know, the forms of HRT we have now are are much better than the, the previous forms were. Um, so, yeah, at least we have a little bit of choice mm -hmm. now, which we didn't have before. But I still would love to hear doctors talking about prescribed herbal remedies as 
an option other than HRT because they are so brilliant. I think every woman needs to know about them, really. I guess like my my this is my second to the last question. Mm -hmm. Question, but um, for you, what are the key takeaways for women considering HRT or seeking alternatives to manage their menopause? It's a very individual decision. So what's right for you might not be right for someone else. I think it always comes down to risk and benefit. And it also, unfortunately, comes down to money because, I see. Okay. because yes. medical uh -huh. herbalists sadly are not covered on health insurance. So you would have to self-fund mm -hmm. and it, it can be an investment. But my argument is, well, if you can't invest in yourself at this point in your life, Later on, you, can you, you know, it's, it's important that, you know, you get this, in order because it's a narrow window of opportunity to get your health right for the rest of your life so if you are able to invest then it's worth doing but yeah it comes down to risk and benefit and if you want a hopefully what will turn out to be a quick fix um that's relatively cost effective for you then maybe hrt is the way forward um if you want to discover more about yourself and why you've ended up in the situation that you're in and what you can do to really build your own resilience and take better care of yourself in the years to come, then probably herbal medicine would be a better way forward. Um, and the other nice thing about using herbs is that you're in charge of your own treatment. You're empowered to do whatever you need to do, whereas that's less the case with, with HRT. So. Okay, yeah. so my last question is, how do people connect with you, contact you if they've got any questions um, and, you know, where, where they can find you? Um, so probably the best place to start is my website, which is at www.physichealth.uk. Physic as in Chelsea Physic Garden, because um, mm -hmm. that's the old word for herbal medicine. Um, and there's a free menopause toolkit on there which you can download. It's like a little five day course that you can use and it talks you through the basics of self care and also an introduction to herbal medicine and hypnotherapy as well for menopause. Um, and on the hypnotherapy page, there's also a free self-compassion meditation you can download as well. So that's a good place to start, but I'm on YouTube as well as Physic Health Consulting and on Facebook. And I have a free Facebook group too, which is called Natural Menopause UK. Oh, so cool. any of those, but get in touch if, you, if you'd like a chat. Thank you. Thank you so much today, Thank you. Uh, Hannah. <laughs> that was really interesting. A lot of uh, my friends are asking who to speak to. Ah, well, there you go. <laughs> I'm always up for that. <laughs> So everyone, thank you for joining us today. So do come back in the next two weeks. I'll see you soon. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this episode. Bye. Thank you. Bye.